Easy car to the garage, then I drive straight to the airport. Well, I'm not driving, Agnita is driving. So that's a small pit stop, bringing back the car for a small service. Wolf, okay, good? Okay. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. So today is a very good travel day. It's Friday. <laughs> the 13th um, I'm not sure why we picked this day to travel um, but <laughs> um, I wasn't aware of that actually it's Friday the 13th Agnita I know <laughs> it's a happy day and it's a Friday and the 13th it's okay we'll soon find out To the other side. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed it, it's a true travel day today. It should be an easy flight. There is some wind, there is some overcast, but that should not be a problem. Thank you very much yes. indeed, please. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, madam. <laughs> and again, I'm the last one to leave the plane. Goodbye. Sarah. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. Okay. See you. Bye. This is the Isle of Man with a lot of wind. Windy place over here. <laughs> uh, it's a friend of us from the Netherlands. We know him for many, many years. He's got a hotel over here. Um, he would pick us up from the airport on the Isle of Man. This is uh, the only airport on the Isle, I believe. Um, I haven't, we haven't seen him yet. Not much to do here. Oh, there. Hey, I'm sticking all the So, they're hiring a car to make sure the next two days we can travel around the Isle. I just, I just have signed one, two, three, four signatures. Four to get one car. Another signature is coming up. Okay. I think that's Mark Bradley. Let's take a look. Bye bye. bye. See you. Bye bye. So, Mark, what are you? Uh, are you working within the ministry, or? Yeah, I work. Um, I'm one of Jane's sort of understudies, and I, I sort of look after all our Tetra users. The people oh, who use oh, really? the, all the departments who use the Tetra radio. I'm there. All the 18 departments, is it? Yeah. So I, I'm their sort of point of contact. Um, if they have any issues, they want to place orders for equipment. Um, if we, we have any work going on, I'm, I'm sort of the one who goes out and speaks all right. to them. Uh, new products and stuff like that, right. um, range orders and stuff. So that's my Lots opinion. of stuff going on, is it? Yeah. Okay. That's Mark Bradley, so he works for the MOI. Jane is the lady that we're going to speak today. All right. Thank you. Hi, good morning, Jane. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Well, good to see you. And you. Hi. Hi. So, Can I get you a drink? Oh, yes, please. A cup of coffee would be great. Yes, perfect. If there's a Tetra network around the world that has a lot of different users on the network, that is definitely this network over here, right? It's, it's the a, network on the Isle of Man. It is, yeah, yeah. So how many end users do you have working on the network? We have about 20. 
um, and they're all government uh, users. We don't have anybody from the app, from the private sector or anything like that. Um, so they're all government users, and they range from we have our bus drivers on, for example, and um, we have the snow plows in the winter. They've also on Tetra um, down to. Well, you have snow here on this island. We do have snow. <laughs> right, on, okay. Um, it's not quite as much as other countries, but we do have okay. snow. Certainly up on the uh, on what we would call mountains, you would probably call. Yeah, yeah. Hills. Well, for us, it's mountains as well in the <laughs> yeah, mountains. Yeah. Yes. But the, yeah, so we, we do yeah. have snow plows. So again, single users. It comes in very useful but primarily obviously the uh, the thrust has to be the emergency services um, civil defense and of course the TT and the Grand Prix or the marshals also use Tetra when yeah. they're uh, doing their marshalling for our events and that TT is bringing another 60,000 visitors to the island every single year um, that means that there are a lot of more incidents of course uh, occurring there's certainly a lot more RTCs, for example. They unfortunately happen rather too often for us. But yes, very, very busy during TT and, and the Grand Prix. Not perhaps quite so much, but certainly TT. Because as you say, it's simply the influx of the numbers. Numbers of people, numbers of bikes. <laughs> is one of the first Tetra networks that was ever established. Um, agreements were already signed, I believe, before the year 2000. Or, Certainly, or, well, the plans were in yes. place to start the process, yeah. Now, you just upgraded the network for another 10 years. Yes. That means where a lot of other regions in the world and governments are in the world are looking ahead of new technologies, you still keep on working with Tetra technology. Well. The main reason for that was the timing, really. Our uh, system is, it was a Gen 1 system, Motorola. Um, the maintenance contracts ceased in September 2015, and the product was end of life. So it rather focused our minds that we really needed to look in 2015 at what we were going to do. And at that time, the only real option for us was to continue with Tetra. Not that there was anything wrong with Tetra, it was simply at that time our options were Tetra. Um, so that's the reason we did it. Um, but it gave us some benefits as well because we had, um, apart from the Tetra network itself, our, net, our network bearer was a microwave um, bearer. It enabled us to go to a ground network bearer, which was utilising our own government's own uh, one. So we've done that. So it gave us a benefit for doing that. We are LTE ready on the system. Okay, um, so you're looking ahead of the future. We do yeah. have to look ahead, but the reality is at the time we needed to upgrade and replace, um, we didn't have an option but to go with Tetra, and the government then took the decision, okay, well, if we're going to do that, we have to invest for at least mm. 10 years. Things are changing so quickly that I wouldn't like to say, yes, we're going to do LTE next time, because something else might have come along by then, so why would we stick to that path? <laughs> When you upgrade your network, yeah. you're probably also upgrading your radios, is it? We didn't do it at the same time, um, but I am very conscious that you know they're also end of life. We've, we've still got, in a few places, we've still got the MTH650s out in the field. Uh, can the MTH650 work on a new network? Yes. Okay, so yes, we're fortunate with that. The only the only problem we have now is that when we need to replace a radio, all the accessories need changing as well. So that, that it, you know, it's a natural progression. We're moving forward. So we've embarked. It'll take us about six years. We're we're not sort of rushing to to get everything done. Obviously, the primary focus at the first will be the emergency services. Um, so we've got the 650s. Primarily, everything's 800s that are out there yes. now. So we're moving up to the 6660s. Yeah, the, um, yeah. the latest, they're hard to say. And, uh, <laughs> um, and as I say, we will then have finished that more six years. Schneefeld, Schnee Schnee that's, that's, that's the that's, biggest... That's the top of the mountain. That's the top um, of the mountain, yeah. and that's the Tetramost. Yes, this is 1996, and the only way we could get up to it, to sort, try and sort it out, was by helicopter. 
Amazing, is it? It really gets cold here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, what else is on your list for perfect communications for the emergency services? Oh, now that's a good question. Um, perfect, there's never going to be perfect communications, is there? Um, I think one of the things I don't ever want us to do is keep rushing into adopting technologies because they're there rather than do we really, really need them for our control room because I think we all, always need to keep our feet on the ground as to what we really need and what our officers and our emergency services really need. So I can't really answer your question except to say that we will look for everything. I don't know what's in the future. Technology is developing so fast that tomorrow somebody could come up with an absolute brilliant idea and we'll adopt it. <laughs> okay, Jane, thank you very much. Much appreciated. It's my pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. It's a second full day on the Isle of Man. Um, yesterday we did some driving and last night we had a party. We had a 60th birthday party of Theo, who is the, as I said, the owner of the hotel here, together with Rose, his wife. Uh, magnificent party, had a lot of fun, it was late last night. And uh, I feel another uh, scenery day coming up. Weather is okay. Come on. That was it. Let's go to the hotel. That's where we are right now, Calf of Man. So in no time I need to drive back towards Douglas. Well, we're gonna have some, uh, some lunch. I think some bad weather is on the way. Cancelled? Yeah, cancelled. Cancelled. Yeah, Birmingham flight's cancelled. Um, everything is cancelled. Um, Damn, everything is cancelled. <laughs> Everything's cancelled for the rest of the day, pretty much. I mean, there's still a couple of flights. There's a London City flight going with British Airways. But yeah, all the flagging flights have been cancelled. So right I have now. to reboot them? Yeah, we can do that here for you. Yeah? Yeah. Straight away? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Right. Yeah. That's the printout? Yeah, that's got all your details on it there. It's all doubled over because it's obviously okay. got two passengers. But yeah, yes, same information. Okay. 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 Very strong extra-tropical cyclone working its way through Western Ireland. It's really impacting this area. Coming back to the hotel. That's two times in one week systems from the Atlantic Basin that we will watch impact our friends in Europe. It's not uncommon, but certainly the strength of Ophelia and what could be this thing uh, is a little bit uncommon for sure.